I'm going to read through Hide and Seek by Vernon Scannell. This is in preparation for your Edexcel IGCSE English Literature exam, paper one. So I haven't annotated the title, but um, when you read the title, I think it's clear what the poem is about. It's about the game Hide and Seek. Um, instantly, for me, I think about childhood, um, and I think about maybe the innocence connected to that time. So as you may have noticed, it's one long stanza, so I'm not going to read it stanza by stanza. So every, after every few lines, I'll stop and talk through the annotations. Call out, call out, I'm ready, come and find me. So straight away, we have the title that tells us this is about the game Hide and Seek. And the reader is thrown straight into the game with the phrases call out, call out. Um, and the exclamation marks make it clear um, that the persona, who in this poem is, is the child playing hide and seek, uh, is full of enthusiasm, extremely excited about, about playing this game. And that should link to your own memories of, or experiences of, of playing this game. The sacks in the tool shed smell like the seaside. So we've got sibilance here, which creates kind of um, a, an olfactory image of seaside, in other words, relating to the smell of seaside, it helps create that image or that um, experience again. Um, again, you could say that seaside links with childhood as well and might remind you of a, a time when, when you were younger and um, can link to, to kind of the innocence of ch childhood. They'll never find you in this salty dark, but be careful that your feet aren't sticking out wiser not to risk another shout. So what we notice here is the child is speaking to themselves. That's what we call an internal dialogue. You could argue this internal dialogue, which we see through the use of the second person, you, helps create that sense of isolation, which you experience when you're playing the game hide and seek. Often you hide on your own and you have to be extremely careful and quiet um, and, and maybe get lost in your own thoughts and um, so it's kind of replicating that experience that we potentially have all had. Um, but despite that isolation, the child is extremely confident. They'll never find you. The modal verb there shows great confidence that they will not be found. They see themselves as an expert in this game and they believe they can outwit their friends. So there's a really positive, confident tone in this poem to begin with. So please keep that in mind because it will change. We've had this enthusiastic um, tone and this very positive, confident tone at the beginning. We will see that change. Um, the floor is cold. They'll probably be searching the bushes near the swing. Whatever happens, you mustn't sneeze when they come prowling in. So we have that short sentence, the floor is cold. Um, the word cold um, highlights the discomfort of, of what they're doing. Short sentence, you could argue, mirrors the, um, the stillness how, of how they have to be uh, to make sure they're not caught as well. And then I've underlined um, a number of words, uh, dark, risk, cold, prowling. These all seem to be quite negative words, negative language, um, which help increase the tension um, and create this sense of vulnerability for this child, although I feel like they're unaware of that vulnerability uh, because they're so positive and confident that they're going to win this game. Um, I should have mentioned earlier as well, the fact that it is dark helps create that sense of isolation as well. Um, they refer to their friends as they, I didn't highlight this, but I've got they there and they here. Um, so. Keeping the, the friends nameless, you could argue, seems more sinister. It makes them seem more threatening. If you gave them names, I don't know, like Lucy and Joe, then maybe you wouldn't be so um, fearful. But I think this helps create or build tension in this poem. Um, the fact that they're prowling as well um, describes them almost like they are predatory, and that makes the child who is hiding seem even more vulnerable. I would still argue that I don't feel like the child feels um, scared at this point because we've had that positive tone. Um, you've never heard them 
oh sorry, and here they are whispering at the door. You've never heard them sound so hushed before. So now they're even closer, again, building that tension. The fact that they're whispering at the door and they're hushed um, creates this image of, of children kind of plotting against this child. Um, and that helps increase this sense of isolation as well. Um, the alliteration of the H, heard and hushed, um, I think mirrors the breathing of think about when you play have played hide and seek and when they get closer or when you're on your own you're waiting for them to turn up do you become really conscious of your breathing um so is this a moment because they're close to the door that this child has become very um, conscious of their breathing and they must have because on the next line we have don't breathe um followed with other imperatives don't breathe don't move stay dumb hide in your blindness those imperatives um again show this sense of expertise and this supports this idea that at the moment this child is so confident that they are um, going to win at this game um, but the short sentences as well here like before I think create a sense of stillness so you can imagine how close they are and they're just thinking don't move don't do anything to attract any attention and that helps build tension but the tension I think is one almost of excitement for the child I don't think they're really nervous because we've got again we've still got this confidence coming from them with the use of the imperatives they're moving closer someone stumbles mutters their words and laughter scuffle and they're gone um, so assonance here with the repetition of the u sound so assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds so we've we've got stumble mutter and scuffle uh, uh, uh. and it sounds it reflects the struggle, you could argue, that the friends are going through trying to find them. But then they're gone. But don't come out just yet. They'll try the lane and then the greenhouse and back here again. They must be thinking that you're very clever, getting more puzzled as they search all over. We still see that positive tone. Okay, They think they've really outwitted them to the point that they can imagine their friends talking about, gosh, they're so clever, we haven't found them yet. It seems a long time since they went away. Your legs are stiff, the cold bites through your coat. The dark, damp smell of sand moves in your throat. Um, so now we're actually starting to see a growing discomfort. The legs are feeling stiff. Um, the cold has been personified as if it's biting through their coat. And the sand seems to be choking them. Um, so we have this growing discomfort so again I think that's building tension um, as well for, for the um, the readers wondering what's going to happen to this um, this poor child but again they're still very very confident it's time to get to let them know that you're the winner see that positive tone push off the sacks and curl and stretch that's better out of the shed and call to them I've won here I am come and own up I've caught you so we've got again positive tone we've got exclamations I've won they're still very very enthusiastic so I would argue up until this point the tone is still very very positive even though we've seen a building of tension and suspense the persona has been very confident and self-assured up until this point and then they come out but what happens? The darkening garden watches. Nothing stirs. The bushes hold their head. The sun is gone. Yes, here you are. But where are they who sought you? So there's a very sudden change in tone here. We have the darkening of the garden, which helps build tension and increases the sense of isolation. The garden is personified to be watching them, so that also creates this sense of vulnerability as well, as if the environment is actually quite threatening to them. The short sentence, which I haven't annotated, please do. Um, again, like I've said before, I think just helps um, emphasise the stillness um, of, the, of the environment and creates quite a kind of eerie atmosphere. The bushes hold their breath, so that's again personification. Bushes holding their breath almost sounds like the bushes are waiting for something bad to happen. So there's quite an ominous feeling there as well. 
And finally, they end on a question, but where are they who sought you? So I think it's obvious to the reader now that they, the children that were playing have gone home, have left him, um, or her. Um, but the question shows suddenly uncertainty from this persona, and we haven't seen that before. We've only seen great confidence from them. Um, and so this offers a contrast. These, this final question really contrasts with earlier on where they're saying things like they'll never find you i'm the winner um and the question is also unanswered and i think that helps emphasize the great loneliness that they feel at the end of this poem so form and structure it's free verse as you can see there the lines are unequal there isn't um, a clear rhyme scheme either so i'd say the cons inconsistency of the poem, you could argue, represents the uncertainty that they feel towards the end. Um, and, and kind of the uncertainty of the game itself, that you never quite know when you're going to be found. Um, because it, Why did Scannell use one stanza? I think it's to help increase the tension gradually. If the stanzas, if there are multiple stanzas, will that tension break a little? So I think it's this to represent this one moment of rising tension. Um, I would argue that the volta, which means the turning point or the change in tone, is from this point here that I've highlighted, the darkening garden. Because even though there's rising tension almost from the beginning, especially like from the salty dark onwards, um, I would argue that the child, the persona, is still extremely confident, their tone um, is still very positive and self-assured and it's not until we get to this point where they jump out that they realise that they're on their own and they actually feel really quite scared. So the theme is, you could argue, negligence, um, childhood and, and obviously the innocence that links with that. Loneliness would be a great one to look at, especially the use of cold and, um, and darkness um, and the internal dialogue as well. Um, but you could also look at this in, as a symbol of kind of the ironies in life. Um, is this really just about a game of hide and seek? Or does this relate to um, just things in life, even if you're older? Um, do you ever work really hard at something and all think you're really good at something and you don't get the result that you want? For example, have you ever revised really, um, really diligently for an exam and left the exam thinking smashed it i'm going to get four marks and then you haven't got a very very good grade um d this could represent that moment of that kind of positive tone that self-assuredness and then that change that sudden change when you realize oh god i i wasn't as good as i thought i was